everyone. It is good to be back before you again. Um, I want to go over today uh, Proverbs. Let's see. Let me get it together here. I had it all marked. Proverbs 12, uh, 18. And this says, There is one who speaks rashly, like the thrust of a sword. But the tongue of the wise bring healing. Now there's a lot impacted in this and before we begin let us go ahead and say our prayer. Most gracious and eternal Father, dear Lord, we come before your holy presence thanking you for another day uh, that you've blessed us with to see, Father. Lord, we ask as always that you would be in the midst, uh, that Father in heaven, uh, that your word is definitely divided truthfully in accordance uh, Father in heaven as it should be not adding to it not taking away and Father in heaven I pray that those who will be hearing this on the other side Father in heaven that it will bless them that it will open their eyes and enlighten them and that it will be as your word is Father alive moving and manifesting in their lives so that they will be able to see Father as well as I um, just what you require of us in being your children I thank you, Father in heaven, for those who are listening. I lift them up before you. You know where they are at currently, God. You know those things, Father in heaven, uh, that uh, need your hand, your light to shine in their lives. Father in heaven, you know all things. And so we glorify you. We thank you, Father in heaven, for being in our midst. We thank you, Father in heaven, for your Holy Spirit, which will reveal and open our eyes to some things. And we just thank you, Father, for your word. Uh, your word which is alive and it definitely is as a double-edged sword cutting down through to the bone and the marrow father in heaven we we glorify you we love you father and it is definitely in the, your son's jesus name that we pray amen all right and so again looking at proverbs 12 18 there is a lot impacted into this and to begin this off i, I don't know if you've ever heard of some of you may have but if you haven't, look it up. I'll try and see if I can find the information and link it down below for your viewing. And you can look at it and come to your own conclusion about it. Uh, but there was a doctor by the name of uh, Masaru Emoto. And um, he did an experiment with rice. And if I'm remembering correctly, that is in water. Um, he labeled uh, or he put into two separate jars uh, the same amount of cooked rice and I don't know if it was in water or, or, or what have you but the same amount of cooked rice into one jar and one into another he labeled one jar love and the other hate um, to the one jar the hate jar he spoke spewed out hate towards it that's all he did was spewed out anything uh, negative uh, dark hate to this one jar and to the other jar love he spoke love to it now at the end of this experiment the jar that was labeled hate um, was nasty moldy um, had really turned um, but the jar that was labeled love uh, from what I understand still was pretty much white rice it had maybe some mold but not like the other uh, in so many words it was um, a depiction of what our words the power that our words hold um, and it is so true because the Bible tells us and I'm going to give you uh, and go over quite a few scriptures here and like I said I will not only along with that video if I can find that is link and, and provide you with the scriptures uh, that I will be speaking on today the various ones that I will include in this video but uh, the first one that I want to look at and, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this one is Proverbs 18 21 all right and that says death and life are in the power of the tongue and so when we think about this this first one proverbs 21 and 
or excuse me, Proverbs 12 and 18. I'll get it right. It's a lot that I'm throwing out here, but Proverbs 12, 18, the original verse. Um, this is saying that for the one who speaks rashly. Now, rashly is defined as without careful consideration of the possible consequences. You're just spewing things out. You're not thinking about it. You're just speaking, uh, maybe out of emotion or, or what have you. There's no thought put into it. And it says that there is one who speaks rashly, and it likens it to the thrusts of a sword. Uh, and in my imagination, the thrust of a sword is like jabs. Uh, it's just like many jabs. And then the second part of that, it says like, uh, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Uh, now what, what makes a person wise? What is wisdom? Uh, what defines wisdom? Um, wisdom is speaking truth. It's not our own opinion, but it is speaking what is truth. Um, truth, as we know, in being children of God, in being uh, followers of Jesus Christ, we know that there's only one truth, which is the word of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so, One can only be wise if we are speaking the Word of God, uh, if we are living in accordance to the Word of God. Uh, wisdom is also applying what you know uh, instead of just knowing it and not using it. There's a difference because um, if you know what the speed limit is, if you know that there's a red light coming up ahead, the wise thing to do would be, for one, in following the speed limit. The second uh, example used in the red light would be to approach cautiously, not rec realizing when the light might change, not to speed up. I know there's been many a times I've seen cars continue to go their same speed without taking into consideration that this light might change. Um, but anyhow, it is using the knowledge that we have and applying it in our lives. And so, but the only truth that would make us wise, again, is not our own thought processes, not from our own experiences that we then come up with in um, analytical presupposition of what it is and what we've gained from it, but what the Word of God says. It is only by the Word of God that we can become wise because God's Word is true. And so to be wise is to speak the Word of God. And it tells us that it brings healing. Now before I get into what the wise does, I want to focus a little bit more on um, the first part of this. This is one who speaks rashly. Uh, like the thrust of a sword. Now I'm speaking and coming from the mindset of looking at those who have pronounced Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Those who uh, have acknowledged and uh, did the prayer of confession to acknowledge Him as Lord and Savior, the only begotten Son of God, and that by Him our sins are forgiven. Uh, that we uh, are, are now uh, living a life in accordance to the example that he gave, that Jesus gave. But what is so interesting is that a lot of times there are many people that I've come across who say they are Christians, but who will spew out negativity, whether it is against someone else, even against their own selves, or, or situations or what have you, without much thought, without uh, taking it to consideration what the Word of God says about it. They continue to use, and, and I'll include myself because there are uh, areas, of course, that I'm still learning in as well. And I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not judging, but I'm just speaking on what this Word is speaking on. Uh, but to spew out uh, words rashly, without giving much thought to what is being said, going based upon emotion, uh, which is very dangerous territory uh, because as the, we looked at in verse 18, 21, 
death and life are in the power of the tongue. So there are many people who are in the church who will cut people down. They will gossip about another woman, their situation, their life, uh, their own children. We've spoken things in our children's lives um, without realizing it that it has its impact, negative impact. Uh, there are times where I have heard um, where people are calling their children stupid or cutting them down. You'll never amount to anything. Um, out of anger, uh, out of disagreement in what they're doing. Um, and we have to learn to control our tongue. We have to learn and remember uh, that if there's death and life in the power of the tongue, death meaning that uh, it is breaking down to nothing. There's no life thriving. It, it is decomposing. Uh, it is dying. Uh, it's not coming to into full fruition of what it was created to become. Uh, there's no positivity or anything that's keeping it going, but it is being cut down to the point to where it is beginning to decom decompose, where it is starting to die, where it is starting to wither uh, and not be its best self. Um, whereas if we speak life, it is in helping that to thrive, uh, helping it to, to, to continue to move forward, helping it to continue to um, go through those cycles and emotions with their heads held up high and knowing who they are, encouragement. It is furthering and encouraging uh, life. Um, and so we have to be careful in what we speak. Uh, if you think about, like it said here in verse 18 of 12, or excuse me, 8, wait, 18, I was right, sorry, I'll get this right, bear with me. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword. When we think of someone thrusting a sword, like I said, it's like the jabs. Um, but if you think about it with a sword, so there's cuts, there's little bitty slices here and there. But over time, that will begin to bring the opponent down. Or that will begin to bring down who we say we are friends with, our children, or whoever we are speaking rashly towards, uh, our spouses, um, friends, co-workers, managers, it, whatever the case may be. We are throwing jabs. We are speaking without consideration of the consequences that will follow of what is actually occurring with this life that we are speaking to. Um, it is important to become conscious, consciously aware that when you are thrusting that sword of rash words, that you are slowly killing their character. You are slowly uh, diminishing who they are. You are putting down what God created. And so in many words, I have to ask the question, who made us the judge? Our words should not be used in a sense to say that we know what's best or we know and hold the standard. Only God's word is the standard. So again, when we do this, we are making the judgment that this individual, that this person does not fall in line to what is standard, to what is acceptable. Uh, we are saying that in so many words, they are uh, the opposite of what is standard. Uh, they're below that grade. And again, the question begs to be asked, by what standard are, are you using to judge this individual? Because it is a judgment. Now, I have to say, because I keep saying that's dangerous territory, because the Bible says, in the same manner in which you judge someone, you will be judged. Your words, your thought processes, your sight of what you see, uh, should not allow you to be able to make a true assessment because we don't know where someone is coming from. We don't know the full picture. We can't see with clarity what is going on. We are only judging by the outward appearance. Uh, when we see someone with clothing in it, I've had to correct myself on this, in clothing that is 
short revealing or what have you. Uh, if we really think about it, it is with someone who doesn't have possibly that mindset of being confident in who they are, not uh, recognizing their self-worth enough uh, that they don't need the improvement of others to let them know their self-worth or their beauty. Um, and to be able to stand and recognize that even in being covered, they are valuable. Uh, that's okay if they don't get the hawking or calls or, or what have you uh, of the opposite sex. That they are valuable, beautiful. And to judge them and to say she ought to know better or, or to say uh, that's a disgrace or even especially in the church when we see someone that way to cut your eyes at them and look them up and down in, in, in disgust when again we don't know where they're coming from and we are not their judge and so we should not then look at them in a judging way as if we hold the standard as if we have it all together um, like I said it cut people down when we speak rashly without thinking about anything and we just speak in a group of girl, women um, who see someone and notices someone that we want to begin to attack uh, for whatever reason we have to be careful in what we say uh, because the truth of the matter is in being children of God and being women of the Almighty God daughters of the Most High King uh, we ought to lift them up we shouldn't talk about we shouldn't degrade we shouldn't gossip we shouldn't lie about anyone else because we have our own problems that we know it is difficult to deal with and we should not judge someone else that we see and even though we might look from the outside and we might have all kind of thoughts going on in our mind because the truth of the matter is when we look at things we judge it and we begin to fill in those gaps of what has occurred or to, to Form the complete story of what we're looking at of what we're seeing and reality we can't see what's going on underneath the skin what's going on mentally and spiritually of a person uh, so again it is not for us to judge but because we do that we are cutting the individual down same with our children we have to be careful even when we are upset even when our children are doing things that we do not approve of not to begin to spew out hateful words to begin to cut them down uh, to begin to speak as if they are not capable or not intelligent enough to make the correct decisions now while it may be that they are immature and that they are still learning and making their mistakes to be honest we all do we still make our mistakes even in being the age that we are whether you're older or, or what have you we will always make mistakes there's no perfect individual out there adult or child uh, so the matter uh, that we have to can take into consideration is that our children are going to do things that we don't like they are going to sin because they have sin uh, embedded within their flesh just like we do and so they're going to make their mistakes uh, they're going to say hurtful things they're going to do things again that is not pleasing in our eyesight especially if you are the type of parent who is teaching the Word of God who is instilling within them the Word of God who is taking them to church on a regular consistent basis to feed them the Word of God but we have to remember uh, that they will make their mistakes and when they do uh, to pray to God for us to be the type of parent that will not cut them low, not talk about them, not turn our backs on them, not immediately um, make rash decisions in regards to our children, but to train up them, to train them up in the way and love that God has shown us. It's not easy being a parent, I know. I'm one and I have my times where I have to learn to hold my tongue. Have I always held my tongue? No. And it hurts my heart in seeing that I may have had some part or, or what have you to play in, in what I have spoken in my children to cut them low. 
And so we have to learn to encourage them. We have to learn to just continue to love on them. Remember the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Uh, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, but our prayer should be that they will come to the knowledge and saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That they will see for themselves the necessary clinging to God so that we can live a life that is pleasing in His eyesight. We don't want to cut our children down. The enemy is already trying to do that enough. He is already trying to kill, steal, and destroy them. He's already trying to kill, steal, and destroy our sisters. He's already trying to steal, kill, and destroy ourselves. And so we have enough that is against us without having those who are under the same blood of Jesus Christ cutting us low as well. We have to learn to uplift, to encourage, and to be there for our sisters in Christ. Uh, now the Bible tells us, because in this verse it says, uh, the tongue of the wise brings healing. Uh, that means that when a person has is not whole, uh, when a person um, is not operating at their full capacity, when they are um, not healed, they're wounded, they're, they're down, possibly even for some depressed uh, that we can use the word of God as a means to uplift and encourage. Now I'm trying to get to this scripture here and uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to it before I'm done talking and it's just not working but if you're listening this is going to come out of 2 Timothy 3.16 let me get to it here I try to always have everything right readily available so I can turn to it quickly but it doesn't always work that way so I appreciate your patience but this is 2 Timothy 3 16 and it says all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate equipped for every good work uh, we can use the word of God which again is truth in help rearing our children, in help encouraging our sisters, and, and even in correcting and teaching and helping us find what is truth in God. Uh, and so again, the next time you are in a situation to what um, that is not favorable, uh, that you have caught wind of something going on in somebody else's life, or you see someone at the grocery store, uh, you see someone uh, in your school, at your church, whatever the case may be, being that we are, again, children, daughters of the Most High God, we should put on, as we are growing in the love of God, we should put on that compassion and remember that we didn't have it all together that we've had to overcome some things that were spoken over us ourselves. Uh, there were times, and I'll, I'll speak truthfully for my own life, where I've had someone to, in a consistent way, um, tell me I'm stupid. And after hearing something over and over and over again, uh, it begins to have its impact, just like that rice. And so, if you think that one word here and there, or, or if you're using these words with the uh, hope and the intention of trying to turn someone around, that's not the way to do it. Uh, because you are diminishing them, bringing them to believe and see that they're less of a person. Over time, it has its impact. And we are to speak healing. We are to help someone wounds to heal. We are to be that salt of the earth. Salt has a healing factor to it. And so when we speak to people, we should do so with the mindset of not cutting them low, not diminishing them, no matter how much we may not like them, but remembering who we are and speaking truth and encouragement to them. Now, the Bible also tells us in Ephesians 4 29 
Now, like I said, I will put these verses at the at the end um, below here. But Ephesians 4, 29. Because like I said, we, we and being Christians. That shouldn't be how we speak. It shouldn't be our intent. And even though I know we are still growing, that shouldn't be the excuse um, to kill someone. Which is basically what it is. We're, we're diminishing them. We're bringing them low. And over time, it has this negative impact. But the Bible says in Ephesians um, 4 and 29, Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Uh, we don't want to speak anything that is not whole, wholesome. Again, and I can't say it enough, we want to help someone to flourish. We want to, should be the intent, that we want to help someone to know their self-worth in God. Uh, to help someone to learn uh, how to have that desire to live for God and to do it uh, in accordance to His will and to His word. I'm not saying again that we have to, that we will be perfect. We will make our mistakes, but that should not be used to justify us continually to do the exact same things. We have to learn to put a control over our tongue um, because our tongue is a powerful weapon. And if we just speak without consideration because also a part of wisdom is speaking in consideration thinking before we speak uh, developing the words we ought to say for each individual considering their situation and if you're not sure of their situation then let the Lord lead you you can pray within yourself and ask God through your, his Holy Spirit to bring to your remembrance those things that Jesus Christ has spoken to you. Those things that will be healing in this individual situation or circumstances. Even if you're passing someone, instead of thinking a negative thought, and if it should come to rebuke it and to speak positive to someone. I don't know if you've ever, some of you may have, but some of you may not, have ever just out of uh, the blue to a stranger spoken something nice told them how beautiful they looked, encourage them because we don't know who we are walking by. We don't know who is standing in line with us at the grocery stores. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know what their uh, hurts and their pains are, but God does. And in being that we serve a God who is more than able to heal, to raise us up from where we've been low, to raise us up so that we can know who we are in Christ. That valuable individual, unique, beautiful individual that we are. Because when God created us, he didn't create us to be the same. And we can cut people low on their body type, the type of hair they have, um, everything. Skin color, features. There's no perfect body out there. Each of us have flaws, and it is not right to hone in and magnify the flaws of others. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us to first deal with the plank in our eyes before we then try to turn and deal with the speck that is in somebody else's eye. We have to learn to deal with ourselves. We have to learn to deal with our own insecurities. We have to learn how to go to God with those hidden things that we are ashamed to come out into the open about. Um, those things that still torment us, those things that still hurt us, that happened in our past, uh, still healing from the things that people have said to us in hatred or, or whatever the case may be, we are still growing and learning in ourselves. We're, we're learning it ourselves. So why would we then turn around and speak to someone or talk down about someone who we know, surely you know, surely we know, they're not perfect. 
and they've made their mistakes, but God loves them equally, the same. He loves them the same. Another scripture I want to bring your attention to um, is Colossians 3 and 8. And Colossians, um, my daughter can spew out these books of the Bibles um, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Really good. Uh, I'm ashamed to say that I can't, but she can, and I'm proud of her for that. Uh, just saying that because of, there's sometimes I still have to go to the front of the book to look up certain um, books, but this is in Colossians um, 3 8. And it says, But now you also put them all aside anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your from your mouth. This is not how we should talk. That is a part of the old nature. And that part of us should be changing. How we approach people, how we look at people, um, our reasoning and, and, and what have you, uh, our judgment of people. Now there is a such thing, and, I'll, and that's again another video, but for as far as righteous judgment, judgment goes. Um, but to stay in line with this, we a lot of times will make a judgment based upon what we see without any guidance of the Holy Spirit and we judge as if we again have it all together or we are the epitome of that standard when we are not the standard to begin with we have all been created by the hand of God and we are all created in his image whether we like what we see or not because beauty is in the eye of the beholder but to God beauty is all of us every flaw every body type every hair texture every color of skin everything everything and so we have to learn to put that aside we have to learn to grow and seek God uh, for change in those areas where we have not allowed him to shed light and to continue to work on us to chisel away those things that are not of him um, another that I want to look at is Matthew 12 and this one all of them have been good all scripture is good but this one was one that just really made me go wow that is going to be a scary time for a lot of people uh, when 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 this happens but this is Matthew chapter 12 and this is uh, verses 36 through 37 and it says, but I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give in accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. The very thing in which you speak will either justify you or condemn you. God is keeping a tally. He is keeping record. It is being kept in heaven of everything that we speak. Because again, there's power in life, in, uh, excuse me, there's death in life in the power of the tongue. And it is so important because it is not for us in any way to criticize what God has created. Uh, because to do so when we judge is to basically say that we know what is best, that we know what the standard is of beauty is. Uh, not God and we are coming in opposition to his creation to his um, decision of the details in which he has used it is not for us to do so which one of us can bend down and take the very um, soil of the earth and create anyone no one no one can so the next time you feel it swelling up with you, you within you to want to judge someone remember remember not only that you will be judged by that same manner in which you are judging that individual but also that everything that you speak is being recorded in heaven and it will either condemn you or it will uh, justify you 
there's a lot to this that I really didn't get to get, get deep into. It's already been 30 minutes, and I don't like to go too much over that if I can help it. But hopefully this is giving you something to think about uh, in the words in which you speak. Because again, we want our sisters, should want our sisters, our children, ourselves to thrive and to flourish and to become that beauty, uh, that beautiful creation that God has created us to be, to be that powerful creation that God has created us to be. It's okay that someone looks different than us, don't share the same features. Only the world has set a standard of, of what beauty is, of what intelligence looks like, uh, and, and everything else, what is popular. And we judge it by the world's standards. But again, being that we are children of, of the Almighty God, our standard shouldn't be based upon what the world says, but it should be based upon what the Bible says. So if you are not sure who you are in God, if you yourselves are lacking that self-confidence, if you yourself are dealing and struggling with what people have said to you, that you won't amount to anything, that you're not intelligent enough, that you're not beautiful enough, you're not pretty enough because you don't hold these certain features or this hair type, or that you are not capable of doing this and that, I dare you to come back and to speak the word of God over yourselves to 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 eradicate or to eradicate, get rid of all that negativity that the enemy has spoken in your ear uh, that is thriving, that is continuously reminding you of the false who you are. Uh, remember that God didn't create any mess. He created beauty and he did it in regards to his own standard. And if God says you are beautiful, then nothing else, what anybody else says should matter. Uh, we are beautiful. We are unique in our own individual ways. And so not only do we should relish in that as we continue to seek God for change, for him to continue to mold and shape us into what he would have us to be, continuing to cut away and to help us to remove that which has been a hindrance to us, which has tormented us and kept us from experiencing that freedom that Jesus Christ uh, gave to us when he died on the cross for our sins um, so that we can live life to the fullest. Living life abundantly is not about the materialistic things. It's not about having a lot of money, but it is about living life in peace, recognizing who your God is, recognizing that he has the final say, and it is by his standards that we live. And glory to God that it is not by, by my neighbor. Glory to God that it is not by uh, an ex-spouse who seeks to see my doom. Uh, it's not about a family member who is jealous or another sister or what have you who's jealous and want to see my demise. But it is uh, based upon God who loves me unconditionally. Who says that I am the head and not the tail. Who says that I have victory in Christ Jesus. Who says that I am somebody. Who says that I am important. Who says that I am beautiful. And who says that I have a purpose that he has given to me uh, and to, to, for this life in accordance to his will and plan. I pray, I hope that you will know who you are. Because the world will try to tell you who you are. And you have to learn to stand up in opposition and to speak what the Bible says who you are. You are beautiful and you need to know that. And in reminder again, stop throwing jabs at people. Stop speaking your own opinion. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter when we look at it because it's what God says that matters. Stop cutting your sister low. Stop talking on the phone about this individual. Stop looking at people's flaws and laughing and talking about them and making them feel so small that some have even attempted suicide, that some find it hard to be able to know who they truly are and they are battling the things that people have spoken to them spewed out in, from emotion, hatred, or whatever the case may be. Remember, we are to heal. We are to help. We can correct in love, but our intention should be with the basis of Christ. And if you know that you are that type of individual who have done some things, said some things, 
uh, degraded some people, cursed somebody out, and you do it on a regular basis, even your spouse, your children, even your own self, then get into the presence of God and seek for his hand to be upon you, to help you to change. Get into his word in regards to certain scriptures in regards to that topic and allow that to get into your spirit so that you can begin to change and to be what God is calling us to be, to be our brother and our sister's keeper, to help them, encourage them, to lift out that hand, to help them up where the world is already, the enemy is already cutting them low. Pray as always, this finds you well. And I pray that you will learn from this as we are all still learning on this Christian journey. Remember the goal here is to move forward. We don't want anything to hinder us from achieving, from obtaining, from God placing us in places uh, that he has for us. And there are a lot of things we have to take into consideration. No, it is not by works, but faith uh, without works is dead. Meaning that if you're going to have faith in God, that everything that you read, believe God is changing you in it. Every flaw, every part of you, every facet and area of your life that you need God to move in, that he is moving in. And you're reading the word, studying it, meditating on it, so that it can have its perfect work in your life. And you will begin to see results. You'll begin to see God moving mightily on your behalf. Um, I love you, my sisters. And I pray um, if you have any prayer requests below, please put it uh, below. Uh, if you have any, let me repeat that or, or rephrase that. If you have any prayer requests, put it below. And I will uh, be on that track with you and praying for whatever you need prayer for. Um, and um, let's lift one another, another up so that we can get to where God is calling us to be. I pray you have a blessed day.